how's it going? <laughs> I'm like nine kilometers south of Syracuse, right? And uh, I'm fishing baits, obviously. Have I fished this spot before? No, I haven't. So you're just gonna have to wait and see what happens. I'll walk you through the gear, the baits, the rigs, the lot. Okay, yeah. This is it. Right now I'm fishing into five meters of water, just for a start. And 100 meters in that direction over there is about 10 to 12 meters of water. I got squid and mackerel, both of which are fresh. Fresh squid, yeah. <laughs> As usual, the rods are the Sonic SK4. Boom. And the reels are the Meg 525. Boom. And 40 pound mainline, four strand, four strand, 100 pound liters. Yes, both rigs are South African big game with a wire bite trace and a 5 circle hook with a dingle dangle. Yeah. Wire as well. Because there's a lot of things around here with teeth. So, what am I hoping to catch? A ray of some type. Anything really. If a bass picks up that mackerel head, I'd be happy enough. So, I will um, show you the rigs when they come in. I'll link the, the build for the rigs in the description as well if anybody wants to make them. It's not difficult at all. Very simple rig, very easy to make. And I'm fishing rod and bottoms. And this is what it is. Garden tie wire, fantastic, affordable, reusable. It's instead of the, the mono, because you know, you got to retie it and it gets shorter and shorter and shorter and it's time consuming and leaves stuff in the sea. This way, most of the time, it just leaves the lead weight. That's it. So this is what I like to use from now on. I don't use any mechanical ones anymore because they're rubbish and they cause more problems than they solve. It's more junk on your rigs, cuts down on distance, just a pain. So this is all you need, and a South African rig or any other rig that has a bait clip on it. Right, that's it. So, uh, I suppose you can use the mechanical ones on this as well if you want, but I don't really see the need. If you're having problems with rigs unclipping uh, when you're casting, and that's why a lot of people use uh, these new bait clips, these mechanical ones, and some of them incorporate a rod and bottom and everything, just aerialize the cast. It makes life so much easier and cheaper as well. That's something else to consider, cheaper. They're, they're expensive. Aerialized casts are not hard, they're very simple. Just need to learn them. Just swing the lead around for a while. Go down to a local beach, make sure there's no one around and just practice it. You'll get it in 10 minutes. And then you will save yourself at least 50 quid a year on a stupid mechanical bait clips. And this one has most likely got an octopus on it. <laughs> I'm beginning to learn to, to see the bites of the octopus and the squids. It's just constant pull, 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 pull. But anyway, he's on there eating away at me bait. Normally crabs are a problem, but cephalopods seem to be the plague in these waters around the Mediterranean. Yes. The temperature is 15 degrees today. There is a bit of a breeze, so we're not wearing a t-shirt. Oh. So I am in actual fact getting a bite. Yes. So I got a fish on. Let's see what it is. Somebody asked me to put the rod so uh, the camera so I can see the, uh, the tip of the rod, but these rods are just too long and it's not really possible. So you'll have to deal with the reel. <laughs> Good Lord, this place is manky hard to fish. Anyway. This will have to do me for now. So let's see if we get a fish in. Yep, we got one. Oh, he's come off, has he? Damn! Well, there's fish there anyway. First cast bite anyway. So we'll get that back out again. I'll show you the rig and stuff. Okay. So everything came in all tied up. I've untied most of it, but uh, this is a sure sign of a nail and the one they got most in this area, I've been informed, is a moray eel. So, as much as I would like to catch one, I don't really want to catch one. Because <laughs> I've seen what they're like, you know. So, but like if I catch one, that's fair, fair enough, you know, then I'll have to deal with it. But it's not something I actually want to do. Unfortunately, I got this 49 strand and it's not all ruined by the fish. So, it's very supple. This is what they do. Freshwater eels, conger eels, mori eels, any eels, they all do the same thing. They just tie your gear knots, right? So this is the, the South African big game, right? This piece here, right? Down to this pulley, pulley bead. This line here is for the lead weight, okay? There's the lead there. Here's the rod and bottom I was talking about. Right, and I'll show you how this works, right? Here's the the rig body in a sense, which is actually the snood as well. And there's the hook snelled on. There's a wire spliced into the mono. And there's the dingle dangle there. That's it. 
so uh yeah i talk about all of this in the video you can just run mono straight through or you can one run wire straight through but in this part of the world i doubt there's very any, any need for it to run wire all the way straight through but if you're in australia or wherever south africa the states anywhere where you got sharks big sharks like you will need to run wire all the way through and just have a mono lead line a bite trace will suffice for around here and ireland uk and all that kind of thing and um, so we talk about the dingle dangle this is it here right this is a south african innovation is so you can clip down the bait and, and fish a circle hook you can also fish jays like this as well it's good for oversized baits and uh, the clip is used instead of a hook because the hook's job is to hook a fish it's not supposed to be in a bait clip you know what i mean although it can be but it works best if it isn't because it doesn't contact the rig body as much or at all and push the bait off the clip when you're casting so this is why i use this with j hooks and with this as well although i don't often use j hooks so we'll do a bait okay so i will cut two pieces the same size as the dingle dangle okay one side we take this bit up here i'll trim it back with the scissors or the knife it's not rocket science so as i said both bits the same size so I'm using latex elastic, as always, even though it got me in a whole heap of trouble. <laughs> well, that's basically it. This isn't a terribly big bait, so you don't have to go too mental with the elastic. So you just go up and over, right? One side, then the next side. And you don't do it tight, otherwise the, the bait will pull together and you'd be miserable. So that's all you need to do there. You hold it like that and you go in behind the bead and you lock that one off there. That's it. You run down the bait a little bit. And you do the same at the bottom, that's all. This is how it works with the South African rig anyway. So you just clip that on there like that. And that's it. That's the rig body there. That's bent just to enhance the loop so it doesn't touch, the bait doesn't push itself off. That's it. So uh, you don't need any gadgets because this doesn't just, just doesn't clips when it hits the water. And that's your rod and bottom there. That's all it is. Very simple. Simple is good. Simple is easy. Out to see it goes. Catch me a fishy. That one's sent back out again, right to the same place where I sent it the last time. So I mean, I'm gonna get another monorail, we'll find out. So I suppose I should give you the old traditional billy fishing scope. Do -do 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 Sicilian's fishing. Do -do 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 Syracusean mountains. Ionian sea. That's your lot. That's what it looks like. No worries. Apart from the first bite, which is getting little tap taps, and that means this little fish munching away on my bait. The boys ain't catching anything. I'm not catching anything. So that's the next bait there. That's a mackerel and a squid. Right, the squid's just whipped around the outside of the mackerel. That's it. So we get out in the sea, see if he gets a fish for me. Woohoo! Not quite, but nearly. Is it far enough? Who knows? So this is my my new light, Phoenix Super Raptor 2. My old pet cell, best light in the world, uh, died after 14 years. This will not last for 14 years. I guarantee you that, but I'll do a review on it after six months of use or something. So you get a proper idea of what it is exactly. What, what I can say now is the light's very strong. That's it. The battery isn't as good as they say it is. So you'll be seeing this in the videos from now on, instead of my old pet cell. <laughs> so yeah, give it a few months, I do a review on your man here. It's got a funny face anyway. Looks like a messed up frog. <laughs> yeah, I am getting some action on the rods. When you get a bite in, and you get a fish on in Italy, right, you say Eccolo. And that means there he is. <laughs> See I'm learning right, I'm learning the lingo. Not just bouncing around like a tourist, you know. I'm having a great old time. Learn the language, eat the food, drive in the country, not catching the fish. <laughs> Shut up. Have a look at this. Look at that. Well, that's Africa down there. Fantastic. 
It's orange. See if we get some action on the rocks. Come on, lads. There has to be something good around here to catch. You can see the octopus going to town on me, babes, anyway. We got action. We got action. On the right rod. And the left rod. Ooh. Yeah, we'll let's see if we go. Yeah, we're into something. Yeah, we got a fish. Quite a good fish. Yep, we got a fish. First Sicilian monster. Oh, wow. I'm just trying to get into the rocks. Short pumps. Keeping the rod tip high. So we can't get down into the rocks. There's lots of them here. It's getting closer and closer. Oh, what is it? I hope it's not a giant bloody octopus. Here it comes. I can't see it yet. Okay, we'll have to go out. Hopefully it doesn't come off. Oh man, it's pulling. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it's really pulling. Stuck in a rock. Oh, it's gone under the rock. Okay. Uh, whatever it is, it's swam in under this rock. Oh, I can see tentacles because it's a bloody huge octopus. Ah, uh, give me back my stuff. Oh, thank God. Anyway, you got the gear back. The octopus let go. <laughs> this is well doggy. Right. Holy crap. Huh. Anyway, well, the octopus wasn't harmed and neither was I, so. So good. Bloody hell, the size of it. I've never seen one that big before. And I've caught quite a few octopus in my time. That was big. I know you're not going to be able to see it in the camera, but it's sort of tentacle. At one point, it was that wide. And that was at the base. So. It's a fairly decent octopus. Definitely the biggest I've ever caught anyway, or nearly caught. Oh, this is going to be one of those nights. Going to have to move this stuff. Way treacherous. I had to stop, I had to stop railing. I would have got him up, but I've got to, I couldn't turn around the other light. Already, that's something, a problem with it. It's got too many bloody buttons. So I've had a look around the area and uh, there's just nowhere else. The lads have the pier over there. And this is what I got, so. I'm just going to have to remember to turn the light up before I pick the rod up. It's just hard <laughs> when you, you get all the you know, tizzy because you haven't caught a foreign fish before and it turns out it's an octopus anyway. But we fish on in the name of honour, glory and something to eat. <laughs> so I've rebaited and I'm going to recast. Hopefully we don't get an octopus this time. Yeah, what it goes. So you can catch something better than an octopus. I don't fancy my chances, but we give it a shot. Uh, so the lads have moved off the pier, and I'm going to move over there because if they're going to catch anything, they're going to have to do that. Well, I can catch stuff here, but this in the night time, and you got a decent octopus or fish on, is not the best territory, you know what I mean? So. They just get grab onto the rocks on the way in. I mean, there's plenty of going on here anyway, that's for sure. It's just bite after bite, so I'm gonna move over to the pier. Okay, Cheers. So, uh, while I was moving some of the gear, we got picked up, as you can probably hear. So, okay, so we got a, a pretty decent fish. Or a giant octopus, again. Oh yeah, it's a decent fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, and he's come off. No, he's not. He's still there. Oh, excellent fish. Now I have to try and wind and walk across these damn rocks at the same time. Yeah, I know you can't see. Neither can I. Shut up. Here he comes. Bloody Mario. Oh, hell. Right. Billy's first Mario. Oh, there you go. In a knot. Right, I'm gonna deal with this guy. Yes.
Oh shit. Right. Okay. That's a fish anyway. On a circle as well. The rarest of all things, an eel on a circle. Right. Moray eel. I'm gonna take him up here. All the tools are in the other box. So we'll take him over there. And I Yeah. I hope they won't chew the hand out of me. Got a bit of a reputation these boys. Over the Atlantic side, you get an electric version of this. But not here, fortunately. Wow. Right. And uh, this is him. So we get that hook out of his face. And it's a circle hook, so we should be okay. Yes, oh look at the teeth on him. Jesus. Oh, I don't want to get bitten by this guy. He may go right mass here. Okay, Mr. Mario, just take it easy there. There we go. Oh, he's biting the bloody concrete and everything else. Okay, buddy. Right, there he is. Right, how do you pick up a Mario eel with a clot? I'll be back, buddy. Normally, I pick up the fish and I show it to the camera, but I have tried that and it nearly took the arm off me twice. So, uh, yeah, I can't do anything. I can grab it with a clot and throw it to the sea, and that's all you're going to get, right? Okay. So, but you can see it like this, look. Okay. Because I don't want to actually harm the guy. As you can see, he's quite wants to bite everything, including the concrete. Look at the teeth on him. Can you see that? Look at his teeth. Right. Okay, so my second Sicilian catch. Back into the sea with thee. Okay, buddy. <laughs> Ta ta. Bloody hell. That was quite a thing. They're just as bitey as I've been told. Yes, um, I don't want to catch any more of them. So that's my first Moray eel. Species number two and another PB. <laughs> I've moved on to the pier, like I said, where I released the, the Moray eel. So uh, we'll lash it out and see what we get. The Moray eel, as scary as it is, but I'm kind of happy because I never caught one before. So uh, that's, that's kind of like my deal, just catching hill stuff I haven't caught before. <laughs> and big things, right. So out there it goes, right. And what it catches me, nobody knows. Boom. <laughs> so one painted comber and whatever type of moray it is. So uh, I'll get the other rig onto the other rod and we get that and see. I don't have much bait left. So I'm just gonna go all out here. So this is gonna be the last bait. It's the same as the other one. Same rig, same everything, right? Same size lead weight, same everything, right? And uh, yeah, this is a bit of a crazy night for me. Uh, new place, <laughs> new everything, I mean. Yeah, so uh, I'm not as composed as normal. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I'm gonna get this bait out and that's gonna be it for me, I reckon. Man, this place is hard going. Giant bloody octopus, a new type of eel to deal with. Can you imagine catching a double one of those things? No bloody well, thank you. <laughs> Apparently they taste really good, so maybe if I catch a double or something, I'll eat it instead of a uh, cream and like um, a sissy. <laughs> yeah, I get this last bait in the water and uh, <laughs> we get on with our lives, right? Yeah. Smush. So we settle them in and we see if we get the last cast fishy. Until the sardines turn up, I'm gonna to, to fish bait rods, I think. I mean I love jigging, I love it, it's exciting. I want to catch a type of tuna, right? And that's really why I came here. But um, uh, this is a more efficient way of fishing, can I say. I'm gonna be doing a bit of this now, from now on anyway. So I met this guy, um, his name is Chicho, and we're now best of buds. Here's some footage of Chicho filming a blue shark just up the road from here. Have a look at this. Oh, 
Io c'ho una pinna dietro. Ma che dici? Te dà il film. Ho toccato, ho toccato, ho toccato, ho toccato, ho toccato. Oh yeah. And if I hadn't said that blue shark was just filmed just a couple of weeks ago. I'm not saying I'm going to catch one, I'm going to say maybe I will try to catch one. <laughs> yes, rich waters indeed. And this is just the start. Finding me footing, finding some fish eventually. I think that's it for me. A crazy session. <laughs> Nearly had a nice octopus and a crazy, crazy, crazy moray eel. So I'm Billy. This is Billy in Sicily. Wherever you are in the world, remember. I'll see you on the beach, alright. Bye.